Hi everyone and welcome to Rum Runner Dance. I'm Dan Genovese. Today we're making a classic tiki cocktail, the 151 Swizzle. One Swizzle was one of the original drinks that Don the Beachcomber had on his menu in California in the 1940s. This drink is unique, um, not just for the type of drink that it is, but also its construction as well as the way that you actually mix the drink. So there's a lot of perception around Tiki that it's always complicated, you need multiple different pieces of equipment, a lot of different ingredients and normally the older they are the more complex they are and even the more modern ones are still pretty complex that's not true of all tiki drinks some of them are very very straightforward like the mai tai is very straightforward and this one is actually pretty straightforward too there's not a lot of ingredients that go into this drink um, and it's pretty simple in terms of construction now in terms of this type of equipment that you need yeah, there's a specialty kind of thing that you can use for it, which I'll show you, and I recommend that you get it because it's cool. But, uh, you know, you can simplify this down and use whatever you have on hand at home. All right, so why don't we get in, into the actual drink? Um, so Don the Beachcomber's drinks are normally have a lot more ingredients than this, but um, the real story here is about this, which is this is what's known as a swizzle cup. Uh, Don the Beachcomber actually used to serve his rum juleps as well as his swizzles in this, which is a swizzle cup. These are really popular by uh, Don the Beachcomber. He liked to use, he didn't have tiki mugs. That wasn't really a thing he had. He used glassware. So his glassware was a lot of bar glassware, beer glasses, pilsner glasses, cocktail glasses, and julep glasses. This would have been the most unique thing I think that he had. Um, tiki mugs and that was more of an invention with Trader Vic. Um, and he kind of brought that and made that popular and it took off from there. Um, but this is a modified julep glass. So julep glasses, you know, are metal and they're smaller. This one is um, skinnier and it, it's a uh, it's basically like it's fluted shape. So it starts out narrow at the bottom, uh, flares out at the top. Now, the good thing about this, uh, if you don't have one of these and you want to make this drink, don't worry about it. Just use a Collins glass, or, you know, uh, just a thin cylinder kind of glass that you have at home. It'll work fine in there. Now, with this, uh, we're going to build everything in here and we're going to mix it in here today. So let's get started now. Normally I have all my juices squeezed beforehand, um, but I'm in the middle of having and using a lot of different bottles for different experimentation right now. So I'm actually out of bottles. So I'm gonna fresh squeeze this right now. Um, so what we need here is a half an ounce of lime juice. So half an ounce of lime juice, depending on your limes size, time of year, how old they are, could be anywhere from you know, half, half of a lime to not even full half of a lime to a whole lime. Um, one thing I want you to note here is when you cut them in half, you want to make sure you cut them in half so that, you know, you get the segment right across the top. So wherever the top and bottom are, put them on either end and slice down the middle. And then when you squeeze this, you don't want to squeeze it to death. Um, so you, you're not looking to squeeze all the way shut you're looking to keep a little bit of a gap so that when you open it up you shouldn't have like this turned completely inside out this shouldn't be destroyed um and not all of the white uh hith on the inside should be broken apart that means you squeezed it too hard why is that important um if you squeeze it too hard um you end up squeezing out some of the the moisture that's inside of the pith and it's not juice it's really not something you want to drink because it has that bitter flavor to it. If you ever ate some pith on a uh, orange that you peeled 
it, you know, like it has that nasty kind of flavor to it. Well, essentially that watery component of it would be in your juice. So you don't want to do that. So be a little bit lighter on your squeeze. So half an ounce of lime juice. Next, just plain simple syrup here, half an ounce. I use two to one on my simple syrup. You can use one to one. Um, it'll just be a little bit sweeter. I don't want that drip to go down and taste good, so. Um, all right, next what we're gonna do is aromatic bitters. Could put these in first, totally up to you. We're gonna do one dash. You can use any kind that you like. I'm preferring Miss Better Bitters here. It's their batch 42 aromatic bitters. If you're doing a dropper, it's six drops. Dasher bottle, it's one dash. If you're using a, a measuring spoon, it's an eighth of a teaspoon is a dash. And we're gonna need um, an eighth of a teaspoon. Um, Down the Beachcomber really flavor, uh, favored <laughs> Pernod. Um, Pernod is not absinthe, it's a pasty. Um, it has the flavors of absinthe, but it doesn't have all the herbs in it, mainly wormwood. Um, inside of it because at the time it was considered illegal. There's a big story about that. Um, and that's for another show when we go over absinthe. But um, needless to say, you can use that as well or a high quality absinthe. My favorite is by saying uh, George's Spirits. Uh, so I just need an eighth of a teaspoon here, which is the equivalent of a dash. Last, and where this drink's name comes from, is the 151 Swizzle comes from 151 Rum. So let's take a minute and talk about 151 Rum. Um, today, um, when I'm filming this, I, I normally put out some questions, you know, ask the rum runner, and I try to do it once a week, so people can ask me questions about rum, cocktails, tiki, whatever they're interested in uh, talking about, or want to know a little bit more about. And I got a question, what is 151 Demerara rum? I see it called for in recipes, but I'm not sure what it is. Great question. 151 rum uh, refers to its proof. So 200 proof alcohol is 100% alcohol. There is nothing else in it. There's no water component to it. 151 is its proof. So it's 151 proof. Um, and now what that normally means is it's not cut down after um, the, it comes out of the cask. So when you're normally buying things in the store, they're 80 proof or 40% alcohol. Sometimes they're 100 proof, which is 50% alcohol, but they're cut down with water. They're stronger than that when they come out of the wood barrels that they're in when they're aging. Demerara rum refers to Guyanese rum um, or Guyana. Um, and it's where the rum is produced. There is a distillery on the Demerara River. Um, Demerara also refers to a specific type of sugar. Um, but uh, what they'll do is the Demerara company um, will, they produce the distillate and that's used by all the distributors of Demerara rum. Particularly this one is Lemon Heart and Sons 151. Fantastic flavor. So they age this um, and it gets a lot of characteristics and flavor from its aging process. Now, uh, it has to be, not all 151s are Demerara rums. There's different ones out there. Don Q and Bacardi, for example, have 151 varieties. Those are not uh, Demerara rums. They're made in uh, Puerto Rican rum style, which is, they're different styles. Um, there are different ways that they age it. Um, so what ends up happening is, is you're gonna get different flavors out of them. Um, one, they're also made differently. One uses a pot still, one uses column stills. Um, so you're, you're gonna get different things that come out in the end product. So whenever it says Demerara rum, you're gonna look for two main uh, makers of it. They're, both of them are phenomenal and it doesn't matter which one you use. Either Lemon Heart and Sun, which I'm using here, or you can use Hamilton 151 Demerara. Both of them are fantastic products. You can use either one. Um, if you cannot find Demerara, uh, Demerara 151 rum, either Hamilton or Lemon Heart and Sun, uh, I recommend that you use Plantation's o, uh, OFTD, or Old Fashioned Traditional Dark. That is a 69% um, rum. 
it's a blended rum. It's not all Demerara rum. There's other rums in it, but it will get you close to the flavor of what a 151 is. And I think that it's an acceptable substitute. It'll make you a tasty swizzle. It won't be the exact same thing, but it'll be close. So in this drink, we're gonna use an ounce and a half of Demerara 151. takes care of our main ingredients. Now, what we're gonna need here is some ice. Um, you don't need a lot of ice for the initial piece of this because we're gonna top it off here in a bit. I just like to fill up your glass, whichever glass that you're using, about three quarters of the way. You want the ice to come over the top of the liquid. Naturally, when it settles in there, there should be a little bit more ice on top, not all the way up to the top. So mine's full about up to here right now. Now, what I'm gonna use is a Lillet here. So this is essentially, these are from Martin Tanit, specific tree. Um, this comes off of, they cut these off, they snip these, they take the bark off of them, and then you use them to swizzle your drink. This is also known as a swizzle stick, not to be confused with the swizzle stick stirs that you have, this is different. This is actually the basis for why in Tiki, we end up using a drink mixer. Drink mixer, agitation on the bottom, aerates this mix and aerates, same thing. This is way less efficient than that, but this is more traditional. Now, we're going to use this today. First thing here, I don't have one of these. It's totally fine. First, you can get them. Um, there's a link below with my barware. You can click on that link and you can order one of these. If you don't want to order one, I'm completely fine. If you have a bar spoon, you can do the same thing with the bar spoon. You put the bar spoon in here, twirl, uh, twirl it back and forth between your hands and go up and down. That'll work too. It's not going to get you the exact same thing, but you can't get it. Um, so I'm going to grab this, set it down into our glass, and gently start to twirl back and forth. How long do we do this for? Obviously, this isn't as efficient as shaking or using the drink mixer. We're gonna look on the outside of this glass and you're gonna see it's starting to get cold now. It's starting, you can probably see a little bit of a fog. It's more shiny up here and this is starting to get matted. Once that gets a good frost on the outside of the glass, we're gonna stop. Really looking just to incorporate the ingredients here and to chill a little bit. But we're gonna add more ice for complete chilling. All right, it's actually pretty good. You don't have to go too fast. You notice I wasn't going fast or crazy with it. You don't have to. Um, next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna top this off with crushed ice. So grab my crushed ice here, fill this right up to the top. This is pretty strong rum, so it's completely okay to top this up as high as you wanna go. Yeah, as high as you can get it. Beautiful, okay. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start to work on the garnish for the drink. Um, garnish for this drink is really, really simple. No mint, no anything like that, no gardenias, no orchids, no nothing. Um, it's really, really simple, which is kind of a new thing, especially when you're thinking about Don the Beachcomber. Don the Beachcomber was very, very famous for doing ornate things. Um, I mean, all you have to do is look at his gold cup. Um, I'll try to get a picture. I'll stick it here for you. Um, so picture of the gold cup is, you know, it's a cocktail and it has like a, a cone, a dome shaped uh, ice cone that was put inside of it and then poured and then served. It, it's really kind of impressive. Um, so this one is a lot simpler than that because the mug kind of serves as its own kind of unique presence. So we're gonna uh, put on nutmeg. Now, if you're gonna use nutmeg, like the Van Dyke said, if it's not fresh grated, it's not worth it. Um, this smells fantastic when it's fresh grated. Um, just make sure that you're using, I have a microplaner here. You can use a really, really small, like fine uh, cheese grater for hard cheese. That will work too. If you, I would not recommend that you use <laughs> the one that you have in your kitchen <laughs> that you grate cheese on for this, cause it'll taste a little weird. Um, go out and get another one and, and use that. Uh, 
So we're just gonna grate a little bit, not too much, because a little of this goes a long way. We just wanna get that on the top. And this is really not a taste component. Um, this is really the aromatics to fill your nose when you're taking that sip. Then in terms of the rest of the garnish here, cinnamon. Um, now there's no cinnamon in the drink. Cinnamon sticks go on top though. Rub them back and forth between your hands. They start to get the oils. Love that smell. And all you're gonna do is don't try to press them down too far into the drink. Just work them in there until they naturally kind of settle. Just leave them there. Now, next, a little straw. The Surfside Sip straws here, as you know, go on, link below, you can get those too. Use code RUMRUNNER20 at checkout. Um, get 20% off your order. This is a, an awesome one. I like it because it kind of fits the style. This is a strong drink, really, really dark, strong rum. I'm gonna use my black obsidian straw here. And this straw right here is absolutely perfect for this mug. It's like just the right height. Um, so this way you can still get your face close enough because you want it close to the drink so you can smell it. All right, next, we're gonna use our rustic Woodrow coaster here. I'm gonna serve that up right there. Set it down right there. And there you have it, everyone. That is the 1940s version of Don the Beachcomber's original 151 swizzle. Let's give it a taste. It's good. It's mm, it's very good. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you why this drink is really really tasty for rum lovers. You have to like rum to really like this drink. This drink I would not say is for everybody. And why I'm saying that is 151 proof rum is stronger. Um, so this is an easy sipper one. You want to let the ice kind of melt into it and dilute it and taste it. It, it, it becomes like really, really, really tasty. But 151 Demerara rums, especially the uh, Lemon Heart, they have really strong flavors to them because of their aging process. They'll have strong oak flavor. They'll have very strong, like almost like a tobacco flavor in it too. I always think of it as like a burnt kind of caramel flavor comes through in it, not in a bad way, kind of like, uh, you know, like the outside of a marshmallow kind of thing. You know, you get that fire burnt outside of a marshmallow and everyone loves to bite into that and it's a little bit char, but then it's sweet right after. It's kind of the same thing. Um, in the little bit of tobacco flavor, which is a little harsher, and you got that little bit of oak, strong oak flavor, but it really balances out nice here because you get this little bit of tartness um, that's needed. And I wouldn't substitute in like a lemon or anything else. I would always use lime with this because of how strong it is. Um, actually, now that I think of it, Uzu, um, which is kind of like uh, a stronger version, I would say a stronger tasting version of, of uh, citrus might actually work in this too. Might throw it off, I don't know. Give it a shot, let me know what you think if you if you ever can find Uzu juice. Um, and the, the absinthe here and then the bitters really kind of play to add some more spice flavors um, to the rum. Um, so the rum has some different kind of spicy components. This brings it out. The sweetness here is to help cut through a little bit of that burn of the 151 and obviously all of the ice in here is to help kind of cut it and dilute it down. Um, but part of the tasting experience definitely is the smell. So I don't want to limit the, the parts that the spices and the tasting of the spices that are both in the bitters and as well as in the absinthe are accentuated because of the nutmeg and the cinnamon that you're getting when you're first sipping the drink. So right before you take a sip, like take a sip, breathe in through your nose and then go ahead and take a sip and then breathe out and then you're gonna you're gonna smell and taste both nutmeg and cinnamon and then the spices in here and it'll accentuate the spice flavor of it um, which will really it plays out really really well it's a fantastic drink it's a cool way to use this mug and actually this is the traditional drink that was the foundation for another one of my cocktails which you can click a uh, little kind of card will come up right here that you can click on and watch that video that's when I worked on in collaboration with Dennis Gorbin 
It's called the Maelstrom. Um, it's where we take the 151 as our base, add a couple component things to it, and then also add in some cool little twist. We add an Amaro into it too. Um, really, really tasty drink, so check that out. That's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, thank you to all the people who subscribe and like um, all of our videos. Um, please, please, if you haven't done so already, click that subscribe button down there and click that little bell to get notified when uh, all of our videos come out. And until next time, everybody, holy Maluna. Yeah. Love this. <laughs>